Hi guys, I'm Nick, and welcome to Story Behind the Stats. Today, we're going to be looking at the highest grossing movie franchises of all time. Our visuals are based on domestic box office figures adjusted for inflation. Now, our story starts in 1977, when James Bond was the big man about town. You ever got the feeling somebody doesn't like you? The franchise had just hit its 10th installment with The Spy Who Loved Me, but there was a new kid on the block. Star Wars was a surprise hit that raked in over $300 million in the US and Canada alone. I find your lack of faith disturbing. That's about $1.2 billion in today's money. $100 billion! <laughs> the 70s also saw the first ever big screen adaptation of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, although this animated version wouldn't score a sequel. Both Bond and Star Wars, on the other hand, continued to grow throughout the 80s as George Lucas completed his trilogy and Bond hit its 16th film with License to Kill. Miss Kennedy, would you get me a medium dry vodka martini? What a Shaken, not stirred. We also saw a new challenger drop in with Tim Burton's Batman kicking off a four movie series. Now, Star Wars was part of a sci-fi revival in the 70s and 80s that saw a slew of movies about space travel, aliens, and of course, killer robots. But in 1993, Steven Spielberg's adaptation of Michael Crichton's novel, Jurassic Park, brought us something really different. A sci-fi blockbuster grounded in ideas that actually seemed pretty plausible. At least at the time. I was 12. You did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. It grossed close to a billion dollars worldwide, snatching up the title for the highest grossing film of all time. So what's a studio to do? Bring on the sequels, and of course the prequels. Bond, Batman, Star Wars, and Jurassic Park boom thanks to new installments, and despite less than stellar reviews. Notable exception, Pierce Brosnan's first outing as Bond, Goldeneye, which was actually pretty good. We aim to please. Of course, other studios wanted in on the game. In the year 2000, X-Men stormed into the fray, followed in 2001 by adaptations of Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. Hot on their heels was Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, which showed audiences again just how great comic movies could be. And you better bet that Marvel, who had sold the rights for X-Men to Fox and the rights to Spider-Man to Sony, was taking notes. Duly noted, take me to maximum altitude. Now the 2000s saw a lot of jostling back and forth, with Lord of the Rings, Batman, and Harry Potter all taking turns at third place. Batman getting a boost from Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Star Wars also briefly beat Bond with Revenge of the Sith, but thanks to Daniel Craig and Casino Royale, 007 was soon back on top. But everything was about to change, because in 2008, Iron Man ushered in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I told you I don't want to join your super secret boy band. Now Marvel took a few movies to hit their stride, but they hit gold in 2012 with The Avengers, which brought in 600 million in the domestic box office. Meanwhile, of course, Disney was buying up everything. In 2009, they got Marvel Entertainment for four billion, and in 2012, they acquired Lucasfilm for the same amount. I have an army. We have a Hulk. Turns out, eight billion was actually a pretty good deal. While Middle-earth and the Wizarding World had gotten new life from The Hobbit and Fantastic Beasts, the MCU smashed through the competition and Star Wars forced its way to the top with its sequel trilogy and anthology films. The DC Extended Universe arrived a little late to the party, but still raked in hundreds of millions of dollars per film. In 2018, however, Avengers Infinity War became the fourth highest grossing movie of all time, and its follow-up, Avengers Endgame, became the highest, leaving Marvel the clear winner. Of course, there's some overlap here between Batman and the DCU and Spider-Man and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but even without Far From Home and Homecoming, Marvel would still be top dog. And that's the story behind the stats. Check out these other great clips from Context TV, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell about our latest videos.